Hi, I'm Becky Martin. I teach Greek art history at Boston University. And I'm Jennifer Tate. I'm a student at Boston University. And we are working on the Athenian imported pottery from Ashkelon, which you can see here, <laughs> laid out before you. So all of this pottery was made in and around the city of Athens, beginning around 500 BC, and was popular here for about 150 to 175 years. What you're seeing here is not similar to what you would see in a museum, because these are pieces that were used. And so when we find them, they're quite broken. Oftentimes people ask us if there's any chance we can put them back together, and the answer is almost always no. So what you should know is if you're seeing a whole vase in a museum, what you're seeing is something that probably came from a tomb where it was deposited whole, not from a household where people used it until it broke and then left it lying around for us to find a few thousand years later. We're working on three different types of pottery, what we call black vase, which is what you see here, by far the most common type including cups, these are pieces of cups over here, the bottom, the feet of stem cups, this shape which we call a skiffos, another kind of cup but big and deep, we'll see an example of that in a minute. We have smaller bowls, some of which are pretty fancy, and this area here, bigger bowls, which we have here that were used uh, primarily for eating. And then we have a few plates and other interesting shapes we'll show you examples of in a second. So the most common again is black glaze. We also have pieces of what we call, let me clean that off, what we call black figure, so-called because the decoration is in black on a red background. And then we have examples of red figure, which we can see right here. And in this case, there are red figures on a black background. Now the shape that we're looking at here is called a crater, and you can see it's pretty big. In antiquity, it would have been this big around approximately, and it was a vessel used for mixing wine with water in order to drink um, with these mini cups that we have here. So again, a crater made in Athens in the red figure technique. Uh, that's hard to put down. Okay, um, we have a couple other examples of red figure. This one clearly has an owl on it. We call it an owl skiffos, so a drinking cup in this case. They're all made with an owl in the center on both sides and leaves on the other side, although this one only has a front. And here we're looking at a somewhat rare example of a vessel that was complete enough for the excavation to restore it. And these date to around... 475 to 425 BCE, and the owl is on them for Athena, whom they know, I think, mm -hmm. as the goddess of wisdom, and it's the sign of her and also her sanctuary in Athens. An example of a restored black glaze drinking cup, a fancy one that we've seen before, that they restored from a bunch of different pieces, still missing the handle. But we can see that they did a nice job putting everything together. The light parts are the restorations. The black parts are the glaze. Here's the inside, which I hope you can see is decorated with stamped palmettes. <laughs> and here is the underside, like the fragments we saw before, decorated with lines. So those are pretty distinctive. Since we heard you guys were interested in gods, uh, Jen's going to hold up a picture <laughs> for you. And I'm going to take out pieces of another kind of vessel, this time made in black figure, that shows the god Heracles, or Hercules, in the Roman pantheon, fighting with the god Apollo over a tripod that is the seat of power at the Greek sanctuary of Delphi. So this is a picture of a more complete example and this is what we would typically find um, at an excavation. So here from Ashkelon, Heracles wearing his lion skin cap with his quiver over his shoulder. And what he's holding here is the tripod. So a three-legged bronze seat um, that he's fighting with over Apollo. He loses.
here we have an image of another Bozeman, um, possibly Heracles in red figure from the same kind of vessel, an oil pouring vessel. And you can see, maybe the kids will know, this is a compound bow that the Greeks start using um, after they learn the technology from the Persians. So a muscly forearm drawing back a bow, maybe Heracles here. We also have figures that could be gods. Um, this is almost certainly Zeus, even though it's just a head of a bearded figure. You can see over in this part here, just barely, that we're looking at a scepter. So this seems to be an image of Zeus, the head of the pantheon, holding his um, scepter, indicating his authority. A couple more to share with you. This, believe it or not, is the bottom of a bowl. This is more typical of the kind of puzzle we have to play with. We have the bottom legs of a horse. Maybe you see the tail over here, a person walking, and then someone else standing here from a cup that was originally shaped like this. So what happens is that as you drink, the bottom of the cup is revealed as it goes over your face, which I think Jen can demonstrate. <laughs> we'll say she's taking a drink from this cup. Lovely. The other thing that happens as you drink is that the inside of the cup, which in this case is broken, is revealed, but we see a figure walking. What this figure probably is, is a satyr, so part of Dionysus's troop. Um, here again, we're looking at the inside of a cup, feet going to the right, and a little bushy tail of a satyr. And we have quite a few of those. Last but not least, we have a black glaze skiffos, a big one, which Jen can also demonstrate drinking <laughs> from. Um, so you can see, again, even with the black glaze shapes, as they're drinking, there can be a little surprise revealed on the bottom of the foot, um, showing that there's a mixture of function and aesthetics.